Well guys, this is the biggest box we've ever gotten from SkyMaster. Uh, this thing is huge. It's got an amazing plane in here. If you see the title, you know what's in here. Let's unbox this beautiful SU-30. All right guys, so we got the base of the, uh, the box cut open. Let's yank this top off. And we got more cardboard. Uh, this is a good thing. Uh, this thing was air freighted from Taiwan and they did punch through the outer layer of the box, but we are not damaged on the inner layer, which is awesome. So now, that is what we look like, more styrofoam. All right guys, and that's what it looks like once you pull all the foam out. We got most of the foam out here, basically a garbage bag worth there. Uh, there's still lots to come out, but this is what she looks like. And I tell you, look at the size of those vectored pipes. Absolutely crazy. So we're gonna set a table up and we'll start pulling our pieces out one at a time. I'm really excited to get this plane out of this box. So as per usual, we will look at all of our small parts first. We'll take all these guys apart. Uh, fuselage and everything still kind of loosely sitting in the box. So we'll work on our wings after the little parts, but let's open up our little parts, starting with this tail cone. So vectored thrust, the aircraft has vectored thrust. Um, now we've got MKS 599, the shorties. I think they're called the SXs or 5Xs, SX. Uh, they're the shorties, same uh, servos that we just used in the uh, Rebel build as well. So vectored thrust, this one was not wrapped, but uh, it's all fine because it was surrounded by foam and just a beautiful piece of work. Uh, super cool. The, uh, the inside of this is absolutely amazing. You've got all of those veins as part of the the pipe system, so it looks like actual turkey feathers, like a, a, a actual adjustable afterburner type system, so super cool. Uh, really nice to see. The coloring on this is beautiful. The purpling and the, and the weathering, I guess, or just the coloring in general looks really nice. They did a great job on that. Uh, we'll open up this one next. All right, so vectored thrust nozzle number two, and same thing, exactly the same situation. Now, jumping ahead a little bit, when we do a build like this, sorry, when we do an assembly like this, uh, we wanna make sure we take all of these things off. So we're taking our servo arms off, all the metal to metal contact, don't assume during an assembly like this that uh, the manufacturer has done that for you. All right guys, so we'll open up the pipes here just cause we have them uh, next. Pipes look good, but I wanna see these things up close as well. All right, so there's the pipe, nice and short as well. Um, quality wise, looks really nice. The inner wall is very, very thick. Um, I kind of always relate things to my experience with Carf aircraft. So this reminds me of like a Carf Tudor thickness or an Ultra Flash. Many people are familiar with that. This is really, really thick inner pipe. I believe that we're putting 235s in this aircraft. Uh, that's the plan, I believe. So we'll open up the other pipe and then we'll continue on down the line. All right, so next thing is wing tubes. And these are the standard, insanely thick, solid Skymaster wing tubes. If I had to guess, probably three pounds just in these guys, but uh, nice to see. Uh, the, the solid carbon. We're not gonna separate those, we're gonna keep them as they are, but we've got one longer one, one shorter one, probably three and a half, four feet, and the other one's about a foot shorter, so looks awesome. Okay, so we've got a bunch of 3D bits here. Let's open this guy up, or scale pieces, and a happy face bag, very nice. All right, so here's all of our scale bits. Um, I don't, I think this is gonna be for the wing, that might be for the fueler, I think. Got a bunch of little pieces here. And another fairing piece probably for the wing. All right, so wood package, we're not gonna open this up, but we've got a bunch of uh, former work and supports and stuff. Obviously we'll have to figure out where all of that goes, but uh, 
That's that stuff. All right, so we got a bunch of our small parts here. Let's open this guy up and see what's in there. I can see chutes already, but we do have some custom chutes for this aircraft as well from RC Jet Chute, so we won't be using these guys. Those are the stock chutes. Uh, we have a brake controller. I'm not really sure why we have a brake controller unless the gear is for some reason, the brakes are some reason electronic. Maybe they are, I don't know. Uh, light controller, the standard Skymaster light controller. We've got a couple air cylinders, our normal air cylinder kit for adjusting the struts. Uh, we've got all of our stock hardware here from Skymaster, everything looks normal. Uh, we've got some big struts there, I'm assuming probably for landing gear or something. And we've got a bunch of horns, and man, those horns are gigantic. All right, more bits and pieces here. Oh, this is really nice to see. I'm very happy to see this. We have some tank fittings. Now, that is one of the huge issues with the Skymaster kits is I generally always replace the tank fittings. So it's very nice to see them come with uh, stock uh, aftermarket tank fittings. Looks like here we've got some control rods, probably for the rudders if I had to guess. Uh, we've got the standard air kit, which is just basically some useful air line and uh, some T's. The rest of the stuff we do not use. All right, so we've got some missile rails. Very nice. Nice thick wire. And we've got our marker light there. Key hold. And key hold on the side. All right, our last little piece here. I think this is our chute area. All right, so we got our chute mechanism here. This is really nice. Very, very nice. So we've got uh, the chute mechanism already done in there. Looks like, oh, that's what the, uh, the JP controller is. It's an electronic controller for the chute mechanism. That's cool. I don't think the older generations had that. That is very interesting, actually. This sticks very far off the back of the plane. So that's why this is removable, is for transport. All right, so there's our small parts that we've pulled out of the box so far. Uh, this is also a fairly new, well, this is a Gen 2 kit. So this system was not used on the older aircraft. So this is actually gonna be really interesting on the, uh, on the chute mechanism. All right, so next thing we'll pull out is our wings, I think, or whatever those surfaces are, and then we will work on fuselage after that. All right, so we got a bunch more pieces out here. These wings are amazing how big they are. And the rudders as well, or ver sorry, vertical stabs are also amazing. Uh, we've got our canards, I believe, is what we'd refer them as. Those look like uh, ventricle fins, maybe. So we've got some bell mouths here for the pipes. So we'll, uh, we're gonna clean this table up a little bit and then we will uh, start pulling out those pieces from the wrapping. All right, so we got some small pieces here. We'll just pop the bell mouths open just to take a look at them because gotta unwrap them anyways. All right, so standard aluminum bell mouth number two. All right, so we'll open our small surfaces here first, our little uh, canards. If I'm not using the right terminology, I do apologize, but. All right, so nice quality, beautiful weathering. I'm really excited to see the full fuselage because the weathering on it's gonna be nuts. Wait till you guys see the scheme on this thing. Um, all the surfaces, incredibly thin, so crazy. All right, and number two, obviously this one is completely different because of the scheme setup. That is so cool. Yeah, wait till you guys see the scheme on this thing. It's beautiful. All right, so we'll open up our rudders next. And uh, those things are huge. All right, we forgot about our little fins for the back, so we'll pop those ones open as well before we do the rudder. I know, we're holding out on the good stuff. 
The good stuff is when we get to put this plane together at the end of this video. All right, so these are on the underside of the plane. Very nice, nice finishing. Oh yeah, they got the elevator marks on them as well too. Very cool. Yeah, very nice. All right guys, rudder time. So this is going to be the left rudder. Look at the size of that thing, holy. So the thinness of this airfoil is nuts. Look how thin that is. So incredible detail on this. Uh, really like the weathering that Skymaster does. A lot of people say it's too much, but I think it's uh, really nice. The rivet detail is amazing. So really well done. Gives you an idea of what the scheme's gonna look like. Just incredible. So we've got, the rudders are actuated with a rod, I think that comes up here and then comes down through the, uh, the fuselage. So those long rods that we were looking at uh, when we were looking at the small parts are going to be for the rudder. So really nice detail on this. I think that looks awesome. It's gonna tie in, I think, to the fins maybe there as well. So beautiful. All right, we'll open up rudder number two or vertical stab number two. All right, so very similar obviously to the other one. Uh, same, everything's identical on it. The only difference here is we don't have any lights. On this one, there's only lights on the other one. So no wire coming out of this one, but looks amazing. All right, guys, we are starting with our left wing next. This is gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, just seeing this wing up close is pretty in incredible. Again, the airfoil on it is really thin. Super cool. Awesome. All right, just looking at some of the details on the wing here, absolutely beautiful. So our leading edge, there's a hatch on the underside in this area, uses the same mechanism as we're familiar with on the F-18. So there's a big carbon rod, bearing fits in, pushes the rod up and down. So that's how the leading edge is done. Um, this here, I'm not sure if it's designed as a flap or a flap slash aileron, but uh, that is gonna be actuated with a rod that comes into this area because there's no servo hatch for it. So really simple wing, uh, very, very thin. Incredible how thin it is. And there's the hatch for the, uh, for the leading edge surface. And we'll just take a look in here. So beautiful quality on the wood. And there's our carbon arm right there that actuates the leading edge. So they've done a great job on all the rivet lines, panel lines, rivets and everything. Just beautiful. And we have the right wing out of the package. Very similar, obviously, to the other wing. The colors are a little bit inverted, but uh, same quality, same setup. Very nice, very nice detail. All right, we forgot about the horizontal stabs, so let's pull those out before we get into the fuselage. And there is a picture or a shot of the stabs. Look very, very nice. So we have a very large aluminum shaft here, which is nice. This is probably a, ooh, I'm just gonna guess, maybe a 12 millimeter, maybe a 10, somewhere in that range. Really nice looking, uh, looking surface. All right, and our other side here, very much the same as the first one. Very, very nice. Well made, beautiful weathering on this piece. All right, guys, getting into the creme de la creme. We are into the fuselage section. So we're gonna start off with the nose cone and work our way towards the back of the plane. All right, wow. <coughs> Monstrous, <laughs> cavernous, if you will. So very, very nice. The uh, pitot tube mount is still taped over. Um, I'm really digging the mounts here. So we've got a carbon rod and it looks like there's an aluminum insert. And I'm not sure if the insert goes, how far it goes into the carbon rod, but this is probably the capture system for the nose cone. So the nose cone should be fairly easy to remove, but that looks 
really nice. There's a close up shot there for you of the rods and the mounting system. All right guys, fuselage front section is next. So unboxing these things is often like a puzzle. You never really know where to start. Sometimes it's hard to find the seam lines of the bubble wrap. There it is. All right, and all right, so there is the front of the fuselage. Cockpit's already laid in place. Wow. So I gotta say that this cockpit, initially looking at it, is better made than any Skymaster cockpit I've seen, and I've seen quite a few of them. It looks like they've gotten rid of the molded tubs in here, which is a huge upgrade for this thing. That's really nice to see. So I'll bring you guys in close and we'll take a look at everything. Wow, so much better. So much better. All right, there's a shot inside the, uh, the back there. So usually on most of the Skymaster kits, those cockpits are all molded out of plastic. Uh, this is all individual pieces total step up on this aircraft. That's really nice to see. And then it's also bolted in place as well. You can see in the center of the screen, those blind nuts. Um, it looks like the cockpit's all fastened in place. That's really cool, really cool. So we've got the door detail there. Take you guys around the side here to the front. So there's a shot of the front section and you can see our three receptacles there for the nose cone and there's a shot in the fuselage. So everything looks like normal Skymaster stuff. We've got all of our airlines kind of pre-run um, for the different items, but really nice. The creme de la creme is coming up with the main part of the fuselage. We'll pull that part out next, and that is gonna totally put this whole plane together. All right, so we've untaped the canopy and just want to show you guys a shot in the cockpit here. Beautiful detailing from, uh, from Skymaster. Did a great job on this. So the mounting system here you can see is uh, bolts and blind nuts. So it looks like there's two mounts for the back, one, maybe two for the front. So to get that can the cockpit out, looks like you go through the, the bottom door and undo the fasteners like that. Well, and there it is, the fuselage. Absolutely crazy how big that thing is. So the nose gear is down, and I'm sure the reason for that is when the nose gear retracts, it goes up forward, so the fuselage is shorter with the nose gear down. Man, that looks huge. All right, let's pull the bubble wrap off this guy and take a look at it. Oh my gosh. goodness look at the size of this thing now these tables are pretty big these little portable plastic tables and uh, this thing is I don't know four inches wider six inches wider than each side of the table holy man that is huge Wow super cool all right, so we're going to pull this, uh, actually we'll probably maybe leave it on the bubble wrap, but uh, we're going to figure out what we can do with hatches and stuff here to take a closer look at everything. But anyways, we're going to uh, open this up a little bit, unpackage it a little bit, and we'll take a closer look at all the details. Well, there it is guys, the Skymaster SU-30, the white Russian scheme such a crazy plane. Now we've had some really cool planes on this channel, but this thing I think is the absolute pinnacle right now. Uh, this plane is unbelievable. Um, I've got Russell here with me, I've got Ward here with me, and we're both, all of us are just jaw dropped at this aircraft. The quality is, is amazing. So Skymaster, thumbs up. You guys did a great job on this aircraft. 
Let's dive into the fuselage and take a closer look at all the details. All right, so we'll start at the back in this time zone, and then we'll work towards the front in the other time zone. Um, so super cool back here. So I'll just take you guys for a quick tour around of the, uh, of the different systems. So we've got our, our stinger tube, which is our chute mechanism that comes off the back by about a foot and a half. So that sticks out back about here. Obviously our vectored thrust and everything comes off. These little pins here are for the engine access hatches, which are right there. Those are all lined up and done already, which is nice. I like that they've also painted the inside of the fuselage here. They did the same thing on the air brake. That's really cool. So to get the uh, engine hatches open, you pull the pin out and engine hatches open up. I also like that they open up all the way. We got lots of room in there for our engine access, which is also very nice to see. Something like the F-14 that we put together, the, the, the mid-sized one, the, the engine mounting was a real struggle. So really nice to see all that stuff. We've got our elevator servo here. I think the rudder servo mounting is right here. If I had to make a guess, obviously our mounts there. We've got our surface for our wings. It looks like this is gonna be our actuation point right here. And it looks like the servo is gonna mount right in this area. So lots of interesting different things on this aircraft. Um, so that is kind of the back end couple shots in the uh, down the, uh, the the chute here I guess if you want to call it that so nice ventilation on this system we go, we go right to the intakes on the front end you can also see that little red line right there I'm assuming that's some sort of uh, gear release to, to raise or lower the gear because there's a little button on the underside of the fuselage we'll go take a look at that now so that little tabby button is right here and I think that looks like an air release because our our red line is teed off and it comes down here. So we'll, uh, we'll dive into de more detail on that. Of course, we've got our nice big gear doors. Our gear is zip tied up right now, but the landing gear is there. Now I'm not super excited that the landing gear didn't come painted, but we do have to take the gear apart anyways to service everything, Loctite everything. So I'm pretty much 100% sure that we will be painting this landing gear as well. And there is the front time zone of the aircraft. So you can see our tank set up here. Uh, this is our air brake hatch, air brake's been pulled off. And uh, we've got two big front tanks. Uh, looking at the size of these tanks, they're probably around four liters, maybe four and a half each. And then we've got our back tank, which is a little hard to see, but it's right back there. So the front tanks are gonna drain first and then both turbines pull from the back tanks. We've got two holes in there. And there's a shot of our front gear section. Nice big gear mounting here. Look at the size of those plates. The gear takes up this entire plate. That's incredible. And there's a shot of our gear system. So direct mounting for the servo. They've uh, mounted the servo arm directly onto the actuation rod. And we come down the landing gear. So um, I also really dig these little scale cylinders, hydraulic cylinders they put in there. That's pretty cool to see. So that is the front of the aircraft. Air brake quick release right there. Sort of normal stuff. Dang, that thing is huge. There she is together. Holy bananas. This thing is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the size of it is, I mean, you can see it's, it's huge. Um, you guys are on top of the table, a uh, good 15 feet away right now to get this all in view. And I don't even think we're getting the nose fully in view. Um, so excited to put this plane together and be able to, to see it uh, do its maiden next year at Montana Jets. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the SU-30 from Skymaster guys. Uh, this uh, plane, we're going to start to gather up our parts very, very soon. Uh, we will be starting this plane probably in the next couple weeks. We do have a bunch of other really cool projects scheduled and some really fun ones showing up uh, over the next couple weeks. So this is going to be an awesome build series. Hopefully you guys are excited. This thing is insane. Uh, definitely the top of my list on coolest planes we've ever had in the shop. Last year, the F-14 was uh, thumbs up. This thing is definitely two thumbs up. So 
That's it for the unboxing. Stay tuned for video number one in the series. It'll probably be a couple weeks before it's out, but uh, it's gonna be a fun one. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the lighter side of RC after dark. What we do over at, at the after dark is we do a live stream from the shop every week or two, and it gives you the insight of things well before we actually release the videos. So as an example, the Rebel, which we've already completed, uh, that was being filmed during the after dark and the other two videos for the Rebel haven't even come out yet. So that's why you should join or subscribe to the lighter side of RC after dark. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.